7. I mean, chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. You haven't seen that? Amen. Now let us begin reading. It says, At least I should be exalted above a measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. This I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord Christ, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am made strong. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, uh, when the thorn ministers. When the thorn ministers. You see it in the presence of the Lord. When the thorn ministers. I won't be long. I promise you I won't be long. I already know the hour is well spent. Uh, but saints, uh, I wish that I could encourage us today to help us to understand that there become moments in our lives uh, that we'll never have to deal with troubles and struggles. But the truth of the matter, as long as we have breath in our bodies on this side of the Jordan, uh -huh. uh, you're always going to have to deal with something. Yeah. Uh, no matter how much you pray about it, no matter how much you see God uh, about it, there's always going to be some things that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, the problem is because we already know that the fight that we're fighting is not a carnal fight, but it's a spiritual fight. Then we have to be very selective and careful how we approach the situations that we have to go through. All right. Because we know the battle that we are struggling with is not all ours, but this battle belongs to the Lord. Then we have to be very selective on how we approach the situations that we find ourselves going through. All right. I was always told by my dad who always told me, he said, son, you got to be careful because you can either talk yourself into a good thing or you'll mess around and talk yourself out of a good thing. He says, but in the midst of all your talking, be very careful because your mouth just might turn around and write a check that your hind parts may not cash. In other words, we as people, especially children of God, have to be careful because when you look at the things that we're going through, we have to understand that the things that we go through are not generally designed to tear us down, but God uses those things only to build us up. All right. But when we look into our text here, we find uh, ready, right, Apostle Paul as he begins to talk to the children of Corinth to help them to understand that there are some things that I'm dealing with. In Corinthians chapter 12, when it unfolds, Paul goes back 14 years ago. Uh, 14 years ago, if you look in the book of Acts, you will discover that it was around the time that Paul found himself being stoned because he chose to preach the gospel. Because he chose to preach the gospel, he finds himself being stoned so much so that it appeared that he was at the point of death or either dead. Uh, he talks about being called up into the third heavens. All right. We must understand that when he talks about the third heavens, he talks about the third heavens because the third heavens is that place that lies beyond where the birds fly. Right. Uh, it lies beyond where the stars hang out. Right. It is that prepared place that God has prepared for a prepared people who have prepared themselves to receive what he has prepared for us. In other words, it's called paradise. Yeah. And what Paul says is there has been given to me this revelation that while I was up in heaven, 
that so, in such a way that I can't even begin to utter it unto you. How many people know that there are some places in our lives that God will take you sometimes and put you in a secret place and commune with you in such a way that no matter how much you try to relay the message to somebody else, it's just some things that you can't discuss with everybody because God put it in you in such a way that you can't even articulate it to come out. Folk would not even understand some of the things that God has said to you because their mind is not ready to go there. Uh, I reflect back on the 10 o'clock hour where Reverend Seaton introduced to us Mr. Giraffe and Mr. Turtle. All right. He said the problem between their relationship is that Mr. Giraffe sits high and eats from the top of the tree, which means his vision, his focus, and his perception of life is always up. Mr. Turtle eats from the bottom part of the tree. His vision, his perspective of life is always from a lower point. And the problem they have in their relationship is that they're going to struggle trying to see each other's perspective of life because their genetics will not allow them to do it. If Mr. Turtle tries to stretch too much, how many people know he'll die? If Mr. The giraffe been down too long. How many people know that he'll die? In other words, some of us have to understand God created us to be giraffes. In other words, your perspective is going to be higher than some beneath you. It does not make you better than nobody else. It's just that God has given you a special anointing that telegraphs through your mindset that you want better, you can be better, you can do better. And when God has given you that kind of perspective, how many people know that there are folk out there that's dream killers? And when you go to try to share with them what God has showed you. They've been designed by the enemy to kill your dreams. And Paul says, there was given to me a vision. Now, he says, I don't even know whether or not I was dead or alive. But what was shared with me, I can't even share it with you. But when he gets to verse 7, he begins to talk about his struggle. He says, there was given to me a thorn in my side. And every now and then, the messenger of Satan comes along and buffet the storm. He says, in the midst of my revelation, in the midst of what was revealed to me, he says, I want you to know that one thing that was revealed to me was a thorn in my side. The problem I have with this struggle that Paul is struggling with is because we're talking about Paul. By this time, Paul has been beaten. By this time, Paul has been blinded. By this time, he has been given instructions by God to do the work of the Lord. By this time, Paul has been put in prison. By this time, Paul has been shipwrecked. By this time, Paul has experienced the life of death experience. And if anybody ought to be listening to Paul, it ought to be God. But look what says, Paul says, in the midst of what I've been given, he says, the thorn is there, and every now and then, Satan comes along and strikes me in the side of the thorn to aggravate, agitate, and upset me, only to remind me who I am and who's the head of my life. Look at somebody and tell them, don't you get too cute in here, because no matter how fine you look, we all came from a hunk of dirt, and it had not been for God blowing into the dirt, into the nostrils of man, we would never have the soul living inside of us. And Paul says here, he says, this thorn that I've been given in seven, it is a thorn that I'm trying to get rid of. If anybody should have been able to get rid of the thorn, it seems to me, Minister Gray, that it should have been Paul. But watch this. Paul says, this thorn in verse 8 that I'm 
him one time. He says, I didn't ask him twice. He says, but I asked him three times. But watch the text, if you will. Because when Paul talks about removing the thorn, God anoints the thorn that the thorn does ministry. And I want to let somebody know in this house that the struggles that you're dealing with are not struggles that just showed up. But what we really struggling on the inside with are only designed there that every time you want to give up, God strike allows Satan to strike that sore spot. Only that the sore spot begins to minister to you. Watch this. The first thing I want to suggest about the thorn that Paul is dealing with is that the thorn helps Paul stay focused. Well, preacher, how does it help Paul stay focused? Watch this. If it had not been for the thorn, Paul wouldn't be praying to the Lord. In other words, the thorn is designed to help us stay focused and keep in communication with God. How do you know it, preacher? I know it because it's in verse 8 that simply says that Paul went to the Lord in prayer and he asked the Lord three times to remove the thorn, which means that every time Satan struck the thorn, Paul went before God. And I come to let somebody know in the house, if you wasn't dealing with the hell that you've been dealing with, then you wouldn't have no need to even talk to God. Because some of us don't even give God credit or recognition until we find ourselves with our back up against the wall. But as long as the skies are faring well, we don't have nothing to say to God. But as soon as our backs get up against the wall. Then we want to cry out, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you ought to give God glory for what you're going through. Because what I'm going through, when the thorn starts ministering, it helps me keep my focus. I find somebody in this house and tell them the thorn is designed to help keep your focus. It's right there in the text. Every time Paul felt the thorn, starts ministering. When the thorn starts ministering, might I suggest it helps us keep our focus. Not only do the thorn help us keep our focus, but look at verse 9. Because the verse 9, when the thorn begins to minister, it helps us to understand that God is compassionate. How do you say that, Reverend? Because in verse 9, verse 9 he says, and he said unto me, he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, when you look at God and Paul as they're in conversation. Paul really reaches into Hebrews somewhere around 415 that says we have this high priest uh, that is touched by our weaknesses and our infirmities. In other words, when God see you weak, he becomes a compassionate God. He becomes a tender loving God. That he doesn't allow the thorn to consume you, but he wraps the he allows the thorn to console and comfort you uh, that when you're going through uh, because your focus is straight uh, the thorn is designed to let you know that God is compassionate uh, that's why you ought to shout through every trial that you've been through uh, and magnify God through every struggle you dealt with uh, because through it all I survived uh, I survived that Negro leaving me I survived that Negro cussing me out I survived that hatred of that boss I survived my own self my own shortcomings I survived that sickness, I survived that headache, I survived that brokenness, I survived that emptiness, where most 
Jesus, when the thorn ministers, uh, uh, Minister Gray, when the thorn ministers, not only does it show us uh, that we serve a God, uh, a God that is that is compassion. Not only does it show us this compassion, this compassion God. Not only does it show us God uh, keeps our focus, uh, or the thorn keeps our focus, uh, but the thorn is also designed uh, to show us that we have the favor of God. Uh, watch the text, if you will, and I'm almost done. Uh, uh, it says, and God, and He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, look at somebody and say, It's compassion. Uh, uh, watch this. Uh, uh, he says, For my strength is made perfect in His his weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Watch it, if you will. Not only does he show me how I should stay focused, not only does the thorn minister to me that God is compassionate, but the thorn also ministers to me and reveals the favor of God. Because in the midst of the thorn, God tells Paul, even though you got the deal with the thorn. He says, I'm going to give you something that everybody don't have. He says, I'm going to give you my grace. In other words, I'm going to give you my unmerited favor. In other words, when the thorn shows up and it tries to console you, that situation shows up and it tries to take you out. He says, I'm going to give you my grace. In other words, I'm not going to allow that thing to over overcome you, but I'm going to activate the power that rests inside of you, that you can overcome it. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it don't matter what I'm going through or what I'm dealing with, that I got God's grace, and that's all I need is His grace. I got His grace, I got His mercy, I got His kindness, I got His love, I got His strength, I got His will, I got His knowledge, I got His understanding. There's something about having grace in the midst of God, that even when I go through the storm, I, I shall not die in this situation, but I'm going to live because when the thorn starts ministering, it shows me God's favor. Can I ask you, I got to drop this in your lap right here to help you to understand. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you got to go through the storm uh, to get to God's favor. Uh, favor just don't show up uh, unless you're going through something. Uh, and if I'm going through nothing, uh, then I don't need the favor of God. Uh, but when you watch what I go through in life, uh, I find myself favored on the midst of the storm. Uh, because every struggle, uh, there's a victory attached to the struggle. Uh, the problem with many of us, uh, and I say us from the pulpit to the door. Uh, and that sometimes when the struggle shows up, uh, we don't want the struggle, uh, but we want the favor. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, uh, if you want it your way, uh, then you need to go to Burger King. Uh, because when it comes to God, uh, you don't always get it your way. Uh, you got to take the good uh, with the bad, and the bad uh, with the ugly, uh, and the ugly uh, with the good, uh, and rest your head uh, that all things work together uh, for the good of those that love the Lord. Who are called according to his purpose. Huh? If that Negro had to be me the way they did me, huh? I wouldn't have what I have. Huh? I wouldn't think the way I think. Huh? I wouldn't live the way I live. Huh? In fact, it was because of the cross. Huh? I wish I could talk about it in here. Huh? It's because of what they said. Huh? It's because of what they did. Huh? It's because of what I went through. Huh? That's why I can smile. Huh? If you're happy in your notes, huh? clap your hands. Huh? If you're happy in your notes, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, somebody ought to shout amen. Uh, watch this, watch this. Uh, when the thorn begins to minister, not only does the thorn uh, keep your focus, but when the thorn begins to minister, uh, not only does it show you God compassion, uh, when the thorn begins to minister, not only does it show God's, God's uh, favor, uh, but when the thorn begins to minister, uh, it gives a, it bursts a praise on the inside of you. Uh, well, preacher, how do you know this? Uh, watch what Paul says. Uh, in nine, he says, most gladly, therefore, whether I will glory in my infirmities, uh, that the power of Christ uh, rests upon me. Verse 10 says, therefore, 
take pleasure in my infirmities. In other words, this pleasure means to invite in. He says, I welcome this infirmities. I welcome my struggle. Now, let me pause right quick because this sounds crazy to me. Because who wants to invite trouble in? Who wants to invite trouble to their house? In fact, many of us run from trouble. Don't want to deal with trouble. Most trouble is nonsense. Who wants to deal with trouble? But might I suggest, when you become a spiritual-minded Christian and a strong-minded Christian and allow your faith to build in God, then I don't run from trouble. But what trouble do is causes me to go down on my knees and pray. What trouble causes me to understand that God will still make a way. What trouble helps me to know that God is still on my side. What trouble helps me to understand is that God will never leave me nor forsake me. Therefore, I open up my doorway and invite trouble on in. Because deep when trouble comes in, it pushes me to a point in my life that I open up my mouth and focus on the Lord. When trouble comes in, it helps me to understand that trouble can consume me because I serve a compassionate God. When trouble comes in, it helps me to take a look around and realize that other folk have lost their mind for less, but it shows me the favor of God. And because I'm focused and got compassion in God, got the favor of the Lord resting on my life, I will bless Him in all time. His praise is going to be in my mouth. I'll bless the Lord every trial and every tribulation. I'll magnify God every valley that I got to go through. I'll magnify the Lord every Oh! 